New polling shows the likely 2024 presidential rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump remains tight. A new Quinnipiac University survey has Biden up four points nationally among registered voters. That's within the poll's margin of error and essentially unchanged from a survey taken last month. A poll from The Economist and YouGov has Trump with a one point also within uh, the margin of error. So joining us now from uh, Pennsylvania, Democratic Senator John Fetterman. It's good to have you on the show this morning. Um, a lot of questions for you about what the Biden campaign can do moving forward. And I, I think one of the big ones is how do they approach the constant disinformation from Republicans who are right now blaming the Biden administration for not closing the border? Well, cl closing the border, I, you know, it, I think the president has been very clear that he has a has a, to to act about that, and and I fully support that as as, as well too. And now the Republicans are never going to uh, have a kind of a deal now because they they don't want that because it's too valuable to have that as as a weapon. And and I think now it's also could be helpful to just bring H H R two onto the table and and almost kind of challenge them to to let's say hey here we go. You know, are we w willing to go this far? Because we do need to make sure that this border needs to be secure. Yeah, we have uh, Reverend Al Sharpton with us, Senator, and he has the next question. Reverend Al. Senator, uh, one, one of the things I've watched as you began campaigning for Biden is uh, dealing with the fact that there's misinformation and a lot of noise on the right that, uh, that are the ones that are supporting Trump. But you've also said that you're not going to let people just answer with noise on the so-called left, that you're going to try to do what you think is uh, right for the American people. Talk about it that uh, uh, a little, that we do not need to counterbalance misinformation and noise and, and uh, uh, things that are being demonstrated by the zealots on the right, but that we need to define what's good for Americans. I think that that's the kind of road you're trying to project in your taking on so-called progressives, who I call latte liberals, uh, who want to prison, uh, imprison you with an ideolo uh, ideology rather than deal with what people want to see done in this country. Well, well, the Republicans are shameless, and they've always been that way. And I don't know why anybody asks surprised that now that they they have any kind of shame at all. And they are willing to lie. And they're you know, right now, Vance just pointed out that he's lying about the Ukrainian aid, and it's very clear that that all of the that aid is going right to uh, American companies that that produce these kind of munitions as, as well. Too, they're willing to carry any water for Trump. And I'm not sure where this kinds of now fetish for Russia ever became as well, but I'm old enough to remember when it used to be the evil empire. And now you have a part of the Republican Party that are willing to stand with them, and they're actually embracing them as well, too. And it's truly astonishing that you are willing to yet, excuse me, to let Ukraine fa fail as, as well. It's absolutely astonishing. They assassinate top uh, critics, and they are now have been empowered to act that way. And I don't know why we can't just want to lean in and deliver for both uh, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Senator, good morning. It's great to have you on the show. Just want to get a sense from you on the ground in Pennsylvania, a state that, again, obviously will be pivotal to the presidential election as it was and so close, and Joe Biden won in 2020. What's your sense of the feeling on the ground there? We have economic data that shows a very strong economy, but a lot of people in our country aren't feeling that right now. What do you think will tilt this election one way or another in your pivotal state come fall? Uh, it's going to be close. I've always predicted that it was going to be really close back in 2016. And the polls really you know, predicted that Clinton was going to walk in, in Pennsylvania. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. The same thing in 2020 as well, too. Biden has up maybe five points back in 2020. And I'm like, that's just not true. And now it was very close. And that's the same thing is going to be in 24 as, as well, too. And I do fundamentally believe that Biden is going to carry that as well. And I'm proud to campaign for him just the way I was proud to campaign with him in 22, when now uh, people were saying that it's you know, too uh, not popular enough to uh, to be seen with him. And I'm proud to be seen with him anytime as well. He's been an incredible president. 
Senator, we just had an amusing Zoom filter uh, moment there, it looks like. Uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, let me ask you about, right now, uh, there were some concerns about President Biden's popularity with the core pieces of the Democratic base, including progressives, young people, some of whom you've really reached in your campaign. What does this message need to be to them to make sure they come out for him this November and don't opt to stay home or find a third party candidate? Well, I, I think I think the president has done an incredible job as well, too. And by any any metric now, you know, the president has been incredibly strong as well, too, now. And if you are talking about young progressives, it's like literally yesterday, he now is canceling more student debt as well, too. And now you have in Alabama, now uh, now you have embryos now being having called, you know, real be beings as well, too. I mean, look at the kinds of things. This, this, this election is always about you know, two very stark choices as well. And that's the kind of thing I talked about in Reno as well, too. It, it, it's like we have a major choice in our America. Uh, what we what we want to be for the next four years as is, is well, too. And Joe Biden has done an incredibly tough job as, as well, too. And now I can't imagine why that Trump is, is competitive, but he, but he is. And now he uh, has now... He can't be canceled now by the by anybody at this point. So now there's only one person. I believe there's only one person now that can beat Trump, and that's that's Joe Biden because right now he's the only person in America that actually has beaten Trump in in a policy uh, yeah. election. That's true. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, Senator, one final question. Um, as you go around Pennsylvania, as you hear from your constituents. What, um, what is the most important issue facing them? What do you hear the most from them as we move into this uh, incredibly important election? What's the issue that you keep hearing about? Again, I think the most important issue is is like what do we want for this state and what we want for this nation and what we want kind of a world order is is as well too, and it's going to be very competitive as well too. And the president is going to win here in in Pennsylvania, and I've always believed that whoever wins Pennsylvania is going to be the next president as well too, and this is going to be it's going to be difficult. And we all have to lean in on that. And we also have to start having you know, all kinds of Democrats criticizing the president, too, publicly. I, I don't understand why. I, I don't know what's in it for you to do that, whether you're just chasing clout or you want to make it in the news or anything like that. But if you're not willing to just support the president now and say these kinds of things, you might as well just get your MAGA hat because you now yeah. are helping Trump at this. Democratic Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and, and congratulations to Congratulations. Him. I think someone texted him, congratulations, yeah. and it made that confetti thing happen. That I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I that like it. That's awesome. I want that to happen to me. I